Aún significa destruir todo el viejo orden social y todas las viejas leyes que rigen la vida de una sociedad y sustituirla por leyes nuevas. A revolution means destroying the old social order and the old laws, replacing them with new laws. Enemigos de la vieja ley. Enemies of the old laws. Staunch defenders of the new. That is what revolutionaries should be. The new laws of socialism are absolutely essential. The famous Athenian democracy, which they taught us about in school, what was this democracy? It was a society of slaves. Only a few had the right to gather and to discuss. The great majority were slaves. The goal of that state was to maintain the privileges of the ruling classes. We have the era of feudalism. Then feudal monarchies. They wanted to maintain a certain system maintain the privileges of the landholders and the aristocracy. That society was replaced by the capitalist society with certain capitalists whose goal is to maintain their system and to maintain it by force. We use force to maintain the collective ownership of the means of production. Our laws, our institutions, have as their goal the creation of a new society, which is not a society of the patricians or slaves or huge monopolies nor landholders, but is a society of the workers. I imagine an American would be puzzled to see a socialist restaurant or hotel. Before the revolution, we had close to 600,000 unemployed. We had gambling. We had beggars on the streets. Over 100,000 women lived off prostitution. We had a population of close to 6 million people. And a third of the population was illiterate. Over a million people were illiterate. More than 50% of the children did not attend school. We had a very bad public health situation and a high infant mortality rate. These were very serious problems. Over there is a dairy farm. The type of cattle they have here are very sensitive to the heat. They go looking for shade at this time of the day. They tried air conditioning the cattle and there was an increase in production but not enough to justify the investment. It was too expensive.
There was also the problem that a major part of Cuba's land belonged to American companies. And what really started the conflict between Cuba and the United States were the laws of agrarian reform. After the Cuban Revolution, some American politicians began talking about the need for agrarian reform in Latin America. But at that time, the term was a forbidden word. The United States owned our mines. They owned our electrical plants, our telephone company our major means of transportation. The United States owned our bigger sugar mills. In other words, they owned the Cuban economy. We took over your guest house for a few minutes. I'm traveling with the press. It's as hot today as it is in South Vietnam, as it is in Quang Tri province. We hope that you'll come visit us in South Vietnam. We're enjoying visiting Cuba. We'll talk more later. We are happy to have met your delegation. Now we have to go finish our filming. <laughs> Before, only a few could have things. Today, everyone can. Everyone is at the same level. There are still problems, housing problems, for example. The revolution hasn't yet produced enough construction materials. 
But in the future, we plan to solve the problems of everyone. You will see the favorable as well as the unfavorable, because the past left us hunger and misery. And although the revolution is trying to eradicate all this, it was so bad that you can't do it in a day. It's a question of time. This town is called Hibacoa. They're building an ice cream stand over there. Who can explain what they're going to build here? The store and the storeroom here, the cafeteria, and the laundry over there. What a huge project. How do you like that apartment? Fine. We've just moved in. Today, if we want to overcome the gap which separates us from the developed nations, we have to do in one year what would normally take 10 or 20. We must make a historical leap. And this cannot be done unless our resources are used in a rational, organized way. There is no room for waste. We don't have the luxury of following the path of free competition to achieve economic development. A o B, no convexo, en este caso el arco. A B, que sería este, el segmento. Pero profesor, yo But no profesor, I didn't understand. Which was it? I hope we could learn some mathematics, but it's too difficult for us. En el capitalismo. Under capitalism. The worker depends almost entirely upon his salary for his own subsistence, that of his family, and for the children's education and health. Under socialism, the problem of education, for example, no longer depends on a person's earnings. Health, education, none of these depends upon income since the state gives it free.
los americanos se preocupan con... A lot of Americans are concerned about personal freedom. In English, freedom. Individual freedom. Sí. ¿Qué significa? What does the phrase mean to Cubans and to you? I think there are two different concepts of freedom. You believe that freedom can exist within a class society, and we believe in a society without classes, where there are no millionaires or multimillionaires at the top of the pyramid, and where some don't even have a job. I wonder if you can compare the freedom of the millionaire with that of the beggar, of the unemployed. Within the American conception, they are all equal. They are all free. But we believe this is false. We believe that without equality, there is no freedom. Because then you have to speak about the freedom of the beggar and the prostitute, of the exploited, of the person discriminated against, of the illiterate. What is freedom to write and speak for a man who doesn't know how to write, who doesn't know how to read? I don't deny that there are certain groups of people in the United States who can publish their opinions freely. But this great freedom of the press, in the end, amounts to the freedom of the owners of the newspapers to decide what to publish. Why can't an opposition party here publish a newspaper? Historically, political parties have represented different classes. The workers of this country have their party, but the landowners do not, nor do the owners of large industry have a party. It is not permitted. We consider our state a coercive one until we complete this phase of transition from capitalism to communism. Afterwards, there will be no classes exploiting others, and there will be no need for a state with coercive powers. Why didn't you tell us you were coming? You know I never do. Here's one of the neighbors. She works in a beauty shop. Beauty shop. I think you're getting too much civilization here. This will be too expensive. Don't worry, Comandante. We'll be able to pay for it. Why don't we go visit one of the neighbors? I feel very bourgeois sitting here. Isn't it nice how we're growing and growing? Are you competing with Havana? We're going to beat Havana. That's for sure. What a pretty hair do you have. Did mommy fix your hair do for you? Which family has the most children? We have ten. If we hadn't had the revolution, what would you have done with so many children? But now we have a better life. With this better life, television and all that, can't you have fewer children? To the success of your community, may it not grow too, too much. I wish everyone could see the transformation from the way it used to be to the way it is now. Other countries which are still backwards should see what we've accomplished. Is this a political speech? It's a total transformation. I guess you're right. Didn't somebody say they could sing? 